hello and welcome back so now in this video we will add basic movement to our player so in the previous video as i told you we will be using the character controller so click on this player game object and right here let's add a character controller let's just drag this up there and let me tell you that this character controller is basically a motor that will drive our player okay as you can see it has the slope limit step offset the skin width minimum move distance and then it has the center the radius and height okay so if you go inside the scene window now as you can see if you turn on the gizmos okay from here you will notice that this capsule type of thing is our character controller and as you can see it doesn't fit the player body so for that what we will do right here in the center right here we will just simply change the y axis to 1 and now as you can see it fits the player whole body you can change the player height from here okay and you can change the player width as well like this okay so we will leave this as 0.4 up to the character controller let's add movement so for that we will create a folder by the name of scripts and inside this scripts let's create a new c -sharp script by the name of player movement or we can name it as player script as well if you want so we will name it as player script okay click enter and after that let's open this up inside your favorite text editor for example I am using the Visual Studio code so open up the player script let's remove this start and update function and at the top let's add a header by the name of player movement and inside this player movement let's create a public float by the name of player speed and by default this player speed will be equals to 1.9f after this let's create another header let's name this header as player animator and gravity in here we will add all of our animation and gravity variables so we need a reference to our character controller so we will say public character controller let's name this as cc or you can say character controller after that let's create a function by the name of player move and inside this function we will allow the player to move so as you know the player move on the horizontal axis and the vertical axis which is a basic movement okay so first of all we will create a float by the name of horizontal underscore axis and this will be equals to input dot get axis get axis raw and in here we want to get the horizontal axis and after that let's create a float by the name of vertical underscore axis and this will be equals to input i don't know why it shows this okay so we will say input dot get axis raw and let's get the vertical axis okay let's remove that input dot get axis raw vertical okay so guys as you know that horizontal axis is the left and right okay so for example if the player press the a button then he will move to the left side and if the player press the d button then he will move to the right side and this will be same for the arrow keys okay if we press the left arrow key the player will move to the left and if we press the right arrow key the player will move to the right and this vertical is for moving forward and backward so if the player press the w or the up arrow key the player will move forward and if we press the s or the back arrow key the player will move at the back direction okay 
and let me tell you one thing more that on the horizontal axis is the, if the player press the A key or you can say the left arrow key then the value will be minus 1 and if we move to the right side or you can say press the D and right arrow key then the value will be 1 and similar for the vertical as well. So if the player press the W key or the up arrow key the value will be 1 and if you press the S key or the back arrow key the value will be negative 1. Okay so in this way we can read the inputs from the player okay right here we are simply taking or you can say reading the inputs from the player and now we have the inputs okay now what we will do next is to move the player and according to that inputs so if the player press the w key we want the player to move forward okay and if we press the s key we want the player to move backward because now we have the inputs so let's move our player for moving the player we need a direction okay we want to know that where our player is moving so for that let's create a vector 3 by the name of direction and this will be equals to new vector 3 and inside this vector 3 first of all we will give the horizontal axis and after that we will say 0 f okay this is basically for the x axis and this is for the y axis and then for the z axis we will pass the vertical underscore axis okay and we want to normalize our movement so for that at the end we will use dot normalized okay so now we have the direction so after getting the inputs and then the direction now let's move our player so in order to move our player what we will do we will say direction okay which is basically the vector 3 so we will say direction dot magnitude if that magnitude is greater than or equals to 0.1 f okay it means that if the player is moving then we want to move the player okay and as I told you we move the player by using the character controller because character controller is basically a engine to move our player so we will say CC dot move or you can say character controller dot move and here we will pass the direction okay in which direction we want to move and then we will normalize that direction and we want to move according to some speed so the speed will be the player speed and after that we want this player movement to be time dependent okay so we will say we will actually multiply that by time dot delta time so let me tell you quickly what we did right here we basically take the inputs from the player okay and then by using that inputs we created a specific direction and then when we have the direction we say that if the magnitude of that direction is greater than 0.1 f it means that if the player want to move then by using the character controller we move the player towards that direction and that direction is dependent of the player speed and then the time okay it is simple as that so now we have the player move function now we want to call this function so we will say public or actually void update okay and inside this update we will call this player move function and that's it save the script okay get back to the unity and after that click on the player okay we have the character control right there let's drag and drop this script on the player and after that as you can see it need a reference to the character controller so just drag and drop the character controller right there and now if we play the game 
okay here is the player now what we want to do if we now press the w key or the up arrow key our player will move as you can see and don't worry he is playing the animation this is due to this animator let's remove this animator for now from the player okay we don't want the player to play any animation now if we test it again as you can see here is the player if we move forward he is moving forward if we move backward he is moving backward and don't worry this is due to the camera moving inside the player okay we will fix that now if we move to the left side and we can move to the right side but as you can see the movement is not that much realistic our player doesn't rotate to the left and right and to the backward as well we don't want that we want this movement to be a lot more good okay so in the upcoming videos we will work on our player movement for now you know how this basic player movement work so for that catch you guys in the next one